are not enemies, but friends. The mystic cords of memory, stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land, will yet swell the chorus of the Union. Open fire on Fort Sumter! The war is on! Lieutenant in the Army of the Confederate States of America. You've brought me something. A sash of the Cadet Regimental Commander. Now that I've graduated, I can give it to you. But if I do, it means we're engaged. Really, Brian? But aren't you going to ask Father? Father? Brian's here. Don't yell so loud. I'm here. Good evening, Colonel Allaby. Oh, you look mighty fit, Brian. Thank you. Colonel, sir, I have the honor to ask your permission to announce my betrothal. The sweetest girl in Texas. Son, for a man that came from Ohio six years ago, you talk mighty fancy. Really, Father? He was courteous enough to ask for my hand in marriage. Julia, since your mother died, you've run the plantation. The servants, your own life and mine. If you want to marry Brian, please don't pretend you have to ask me. Put it around my waist, Brian. There we are. I don't blame Sam Houston for refusing to sign the papers for Texas to secede. Seems that Texas seceded without him. Colonel, why didn't Sam Houston want Texas to join the South? He didn't want to join with the North, either. He believed that all the states should remain together. You might say the man was an American. Father, with a war on, that kind of talk is seditious. If it wasn't for Sam Houston, there wouldn't be any state of Texas. Next, you'll be telling us about the Alamo and the war with Santa Ana. It wasn't so very long ago. Being a southerner doesn't necessarily mean that I have to approve of this war. Oh, you're old-fashioned. Well, this is no occasion for talk like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. Julia Allaby has consented to be my wife. Congratulations. Oh. Give it to Brian, the best-looking girl in Texas. Are you going to wait till after the war is over? Before you marry her? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, will you excuse me for a moment? Certainly, dear, but don't be too long. Thank you. Thank you. Here. How dare you come here tonight? Ruffles, lace, even a sash. Why didn't you invite me? Surely you're joking. Why, this is a party for the Southern aristocracy. Yes. My father owned this land, and his father before him. My family ancestry is over 300 years old. That is true aristocracy, Julia. But your father lost the land. No, he did not lose it. It was confiscated. But that's a very long time ago. You spoke about being an aristocrat. Chino, I realize that the finest and noblest of Spanish blood runs in your veins, but really... But things are different now. Why have you chosen tonight to bother me with this talk? I am leaving here tonight. Where are you going? I am taking my parents, my sister and my friends over to my own country. Oh, but that's ridiculous. You can't go away. Why? because there will be no one else to catch your wild steers for you, to feed your Negro slaves. Why must you go? There is nothing but poverty and 
disintegration here for my people. Over in Mexico, Juarez needs men to fight. I am going to join him. Juarez? Oh, that's nonsense. Why, his ragged bandits will never be able to defeat the French troops in Mexico. This is the Great War, Chino, here in America. The young men will be going away. I won't have enough money to pay anyone to catch the steers. I'll need you here more than ever. Adios, senorita. Chino, you must stay. Can't I persuade you to stay? You've always talked like this when you wanted anything done. Made promises you knew you couldn't keep. Made promises? With your eyes, your left. Knowing I didn't dare touch you. Please stay. Knowing they'd kill me if I touched you. I pleaded with you not to flirt. I begged you. Let go of me! you against threatening with him? He dragged me from the house. Look what he's done to me. They might believe you, but I don't. I'm going to stop him. It's too late now. You can't stop him. Tie it off over there. Stop it. Stop this, I say. You better keep out of this, Colonel. Let him swing. Get away from that man. Carl. Release. This man insulted Julia. It isn't possible to insult Julia. Be careful, Carl. She and I are engaged to be married. And I'm sorry for you. I said release him. Untie his hands. Go, amigo. I'll meet you later. Anyone tries to follow him, I'll get a bullet in the back. I reckon that's just about your style of fighting these days. Take off your sword. I just came from San Antonio. I got official military orders for you from General McCullough. Military orders? You're not even a soldier. I don't believe in this war. Americans against Americans. I'll try to help Texas, even if it means fighting beside you. Says you're to start a cattle drive from San Antonio on the 25th. With a military escort. You're to command them, but you'll take your orders from me. I refuse. Southern officer refuses his first official order? You did this. You asked for me personally. I ride to San Antonio tonight and protest it. Read the last paragraph of your orders. It says, your status as a civilian in the Confederate Army is to 
be considered by all military personnel as that of full colonel, cattleman, common cowboy. You're thinking of the Carl Miller you knew before he went away. I want to talk to you. Is right now soon enough? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I just happened to remember the day that Carl rode off, and you and Julie were laughing at him. Now he's made a fortune and ranks with the colonel of the Confederate Army. <laughs> you think that's funny? Oh, no, no, no. But I was just thinking that maybe you shouldn't have laughed at him as loud as you did. <laughs> See if I can guess why they were going to hang Chino. Doesn't this tell you anything? Isn't it enough that your kind confiscated the figure old lands and made Chino and his family paupers? Ever since the day I left, you've been teasing and tantalizing him the way you used to with me. That isn't true. Fluttering your eyes, being coy and cute, asking for things and getting them done. You went too far, and this is what happened. He told me he was going away. You didn't like that, did you? Oh, Carl, you've been gone for three long years. What kind of a welcome is this? You're no good. You don't know how to be good. Why don't you teach me? Chino was about to be hung. It didn't mean anything to you. We've been hearing wonderful things about you. You knew Chino was the best friend I have in the world? I've forgotten how strong you are. He taught me how to ride and shoot. He taught me everything I know about cattle. Carl, you don't know how I've missed you. I don't care about Brian. What do you want from me? I'll see that Brian killed you for this. It will be a long journey on foot. I know, senora. Chino Figueroa, for many years we have depended on you to protect us and guide us. And now... I have done my best, senora. But we are in the wrong country. We must go. If we start in the morning, the going will be easier. No. They will be here after him before morning. As soon as they thought Carl Miller was gone. But, Gino, you say he will be down to see us. My poor little sister. Carl! <laughs> Every day, for three years, she bothers me. When is Carl coming back? You all right, Chino? Yes. I'm glad you came, Carl. It is a debt I owe you that I shall repay. It's nothing. Are you leaving tonight? They are going, but I will stay here with you. She knows that is impossible. Tell him that he's wrong. There's a war in our country? War. In Mexico, we'll be fighting the French. Here, you are fighting one another. I will never see you again. When the war is over, Manina. When was the first time you called me that? I pulled a thorn from your foot. I was 11 years old. I had an awful pest. I would never love anyone else. Never. Neither will I. That woman, she tried to make you love her. Well, not really. It's just the way Julia is. She held my life in her hands. Someday, I swear, I shall hold hers in mine. What well, are you getting so solemn? Remember, I used to call this the place of laughter. Nobody in the world could laugh like you, <laughs> I'm afraid there is no longer anything to laugh about, my friend. But we must go now. Recojan todo que ya nos vamos. Is there any place I can reach you with a message? Uh, the 101 Saloon in San Antonio. What are you going to do? Well, many things. First, I have to go and see my father. Oh. Three minutes out of three whole years. Come along, Mr.
been gone almost three years, and I wonder what your emotions were when you rode up and saw this old place again. Your whole boyhood was here. When you were 12, you lay in this very room, sick with pneumonia. And I told you stories about the old days in Germany and the reason why we Germans migrated to America with a dream in our heads about liberty and equality among men. But now there's grave trouble in this great country and our old dream is at stake. I've gone to Germantown to sit out the war with my friends, but it's my fervent hope that in these days of stress, when there will be conflicting opinion and impassioned bias, that no matter what others say around you, you will never forget the dream of freedom and compassion and equality that I've tried so hard to give you as your heritage. With much love, your father. Over, sir. Reporting with a detachment of cavalry. I thought you were going to make a protest against working for me. It's General McCullough's opinion, sir, that one good cattleman is worth 200 cavalry lieutenants. Any of your boys had any experience riding herd? Three of them, sir. Get them up here. Vargas! Dane! Coolidge! Front and center. Fellas have first names? They call me Doby, sir. I'm Jim. I'm Bob, sir. I'm Carl Miller. There's no need to call me sir. For the sake of discipline, I'd rather they would. I'd rather have them bestow that honor on you alone. Since you're the only ones that know anything about herding, I'll be depending on you to show the others what to do. It was my understanding that we're here as a military unit. If and when we're attacked by the enemy, you'll be a military unit. Right now, we got work to do herding these cattle. It's gonna be something teaching these greenhorns. That's all. Julia told me you slapped her. Did she also tell you you were supposed to kill me? I will, just as soon as this war is over. Ranch these cattle come from, Carl? No ranch. Until a week or so ago, they were running wild. Wild steers? They don't belong to anyone. I've been making my living just rounding them up and selling them. Where'd they come from originally? Mexican ranchers here in Texas. Most of them went back across the border when Zach Taylor came through here in 46. Thank you. 
Reckon we'll make it all right? Uh, it's possible. You mean if we don't run into a mess of Yankees? We're putting so many of them ashore down in the Gulf, we can't count not running into a few of them. Well, then the lieutenant can have that shooting war he's hankering for. You mean he's still hankering for it? He's downright humiliated. Thinks the Confederate high command's making a cow hand out of him. Ain't his idea of war, he says. And he told you about it? Lieutenant hasn't said a word to me for two weeks. Maybe he's sore about something. Yeah, it could be. Talk to you. Must be important for you to break your silence after three weeks. What are your plans? Well, Lieutenant, we're going to rest here till sundown and then try to get through the pass when it gets dark. Afraid of Union patrols? Well, those hills are a fine place for an ambush. I think we'll be pretty safe once we get through. You may have a chance. Come on. Aren't you in uniform? I'm a civilian. Aren't these men in charge of an officer? Anybody see Lieutenant Culver? Last I saw of him, he was leaving. The cattle's confiscated. And since you saw fit to lead these rebels, civilian or no, you're going to land in a military prison camp. Celebrate. Celebrate what? It's one whole year today we've been locked up in this hall. They're gonna start exchanging prisoners pretty soon. Maybe we'll get out of it. 
Well, I can imagine them exchanging soldiers, but how are they going to figure exchanging a civilian like me? They'll find a way. I'll wait till then to do my celebrating. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. In the name of my staff and my brigade who are approaching this fair city, I thank you. I'm sorry that we cannot accept the hospitality of San Antonio, but now that hostilities have ended, we are leaving Texas to ride into Mexico and offer our services to Emperor Maximilian and the gallant French troops who are waging war against the ragged outlaws of Juarez. Juarez is not an outlaw. He's the rightful president of Mexico. It is the French who have invaded our land. Juarez is fighting for justice. Let's see your papers. SP, what's that stand for? Special kind of war prisoner. What was so special about you? I wasn't a soldier. I was a civilian cattleman. The war's been ended for over four months. You just getting back to San Antonio? Yeah. Came in to get my mail if they have any. All right, you can go. If you returning rebels will behave yourselves, there won't be any trouble. Hey, bartender. How much whiskey will $10,000 buy me? Well, this is Confederate money. I know. What'll it buy me? Not even one small beer. Boys, that's my entire life savings. <laughs> I'll buy the drinks. What do you have? Give me some whiskey. Why, look who's here. Well, Carl, howdy, Carl. Carl. Didn't know you without the beard. Sit down. Where'd you blow in from? <laughs> Didn't get released till three days ago. The civilian state is head of confused. They had to get my papers from Washington. Fellas were lucky to get out in that prisoner swap. Yeah, but after we got back into the service, guess who our commanding officer was? Not Lieutenant Culver. Captain Culver. Before the war was over, he was a major. Didn't they ever find out he deserted when we had that fight with the Union Patrol? I reckon they never did. We considered letting the cat out of the bag, but we couldn't prove anything. Then his word against ours. With him an officer, a gentleman, who would they believe? After peace was declared, he got himself quite a reputation in these parts. Him and 50 of his men operated as knife-riding marauders. They gave the occupation troops quite a rough time. Where is he now? That's what those Yankees would like to know. Hasn't been seen for weeks. You boys working? Driving cattle over the Chisholm Trail. Who's your boss? The old man himself. I know him. Now, start in a week. 5,000 head? All right. Hello, John. Well, I declare, Carl Miller. Still the same old business, eh? Yeah, there's a big boom on for cattle. I don't know what you're doing these days, but if you can get a crew in, round up a thousand head of wild Ladinos, I can start you on your way to being fat and rich. 
I'm paying off in Yankee gold. Lots of it. Well, if you let me hire about three of your boys away from me, I'll be able to take you up on that. Well, those are probably the best cow hands in Texas. But seeing it's you, you've made yourself a deal. How soon can you start? Well, I have some business to clean up first. Oh, you got any mail for Carl Miller? I'll go see, sir. There's mail for practically everybody. It's been accumulating ever since the war started. <laughs> oh, if you haven't gotten any letters, I'll give you somebody else's. <laughs> well, the first thing I have to do is ride over to Germantown and see my father. Now, the people who lived in Germantown aren't there anymore. What happened? Well, it seems the Germans in that area refused to sign the Confederate pledge. Some people say they even offered armed resistance. Glenn, what about that raid in Germantown the first year of the war? Well, Captain Culver's company went in there and there was quite a bit of shooting. A lot of them old men got killed, the rest of them escaped. I guess my father got away, probably went back home. Oh, quite a packet of letters here piled up. From some Mexican girl, Stanya Figueroa is the name. Aren't there any from my father? Mm, I guess not, that's, that's all there was. I may have heard that I was in a prisoner of war camp. Decided that since he was home already, I have to go over and see if he is home. It's about 50 miles from here. I'm leaving now. Mr. Chisholm's agreed to let me hire you boys away from him. Want to work for me? Sure would, if it's all right with Mr. Chisholm. Go ahead. You've got yourself a cow hand. We leaving now? Uh, saddle up and head for that Nucus River brush country. Start chasing some of those wild steers out of there. As soon as I see my father, I'll pick up a few more boys and join you. We'll have a thousand head of steers for you inside a week. Anybody else made a promise like that, I'd say it couldn't be done. I hope you find your father all right, Carl. Thanks. You are not happy to see me. Well, of course I am. No. It is on your face. Have you seen my father? No. I heard the war was over and I came here to find you. Yeah, but Miss Tanya, I... Now you are here. You don't want me. I will get my things. Crazy little chat. I saw smoke from the chimney and thought my father was here. Then you are not angry, mi vida. Where's Chino? In Mexico. Still fighting? Yes. Some Confederate soldiers were on the way to Mexico City to join General Shelby. Ryan Culver's outfit of marauders? The same. Chino captured them all. What does he intend to do with Major Culver and his boys? He need cattle for his people. So he will release the American for 500 head of cattle. But if the cattle are not delivered inside of a month, He'd execute the Americans? Yes. Chino'd never massacre a group of men who... But it's war. Chino's not the same man you knew. What answer did he get? They say no. Months isn't very much time. Those steers have to be rounded up wild, driven across impossible territory. Chino send the note with you? No. I told you why I came here. Well, I have a secret for you. Yes. I love you, too. Where are you going? To the plantation. I'll be back. You are going to see her. I have to find out what happened to my father. Be still live here? If you're talking about the man who owned this place, he's dead. This house is being used as headquarters for the Union Army. Let me see your papers. Your army confiscating civilian property? What if it is? Is it any of your business, Rebel? 
Up until three weeks ago, Culver's Marauders used this plantation as their headquarters. Uh, Julia Allaby must be here. She is. Are you acquainted with her? Carl, at last you're home. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Mr. Mill is an old and very dear friend of mine. Do come in, Carl. The soldiers have been so cooperative. As you can see, they even give me protection in my own home. It's none too safe for a girl these days living alone. My father died a year and a half ago. I guess you heard about that. Oh, but then so many dreadful things have been happening. I suppose you know what it is to lose a war. Oh, Captain Garfield, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Mr. Miller. How do you do? I've invited a group of high-ranking Union officers to be my guests here. I realize that may seem odd to you, but in my opinion, it will do the South no good to hold any bitterness, and I certainly am not one to hold a grudge. Why don't you stop talking? Carl, you're not going to be rude, are you? The last time you saw me, you slapped me. Surely you're not thinking of that dreadful night. Why, well, I put it completely out of my mind. I forgave you long ago. Have you forgiven yourself? About Chino? But they didn't really hang him. Everything in the South has changed except you. So that's going to be your attitude. High and mighty. The big cattleman. No doubt you'll take up where you left off. You'll be rich. I'll be poor. I am poor. You're feeling awfully sorry for yourself. Carl, I think you're horrid. Slapping me and then running into her arms. And now letting her live in your cabin. Why haven't you been to see me sooner? Wouldn't she let you come? What are you so wound up about? If you have any more insults, you can kindly leave them with my soldiers. They aren't your soldiers. The officers here are not your guests. I believe our interview is quite finished, Mr. Miller. It hasn't even started. I must ask you to leave. You stop this silly talk. I want to know about my father. Your father was a traitor. He wouldn't even fight for the South. Now he's dead. Brian killed him. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Brian killed him. He's going to join forces with Shelby and Maximilian. I'm only waiting now to join him. We're going to have land in Mexico, a ranch and cattle. We'll live as we used to. We'll have servants and money. Brian's in a prison in Mexico. They intend to kill him. That privilege belongs to me. Carl! Can you tell me how to find Chino's hideout in Mexico? Of course. Can I drive cattle across that country? Chino don't want you to pay the ransom. He asked for 500 head of cattle and he's going to get them. That means 49 of those men can head back for Texas. You say 49 men? Culver won't be coming back. Sorry to intrude on you and your lady friend, but you can't leave me here with them. When Brian was here, it wasn't so bad. But now there's nobody. Brian's gone. My father's gone. There's just nobody. Soldiers laugh at me, treat me like dirt. The officers insult me every chance they get. I can't stand it any longer. Please, please take me with you. Or shoot me. Why don't you? Oh, I know you hate me. You both hate me. But I'm humbling myself. I'm asking you to forgive me. What do you want me to do? Take me to the north, another city, a new start. I'm starting a cattle drive into Mexico. Let me go with you. I'll wait for Brian in Mexico City. He's not going to get to Mexico City. Brian's a brave man, and I love him. You're afraid to take me to him. You're afraid to even let him live. You'll probably have him shot by a Mexican rapper. Stay here alone. You know why she suggests taking you along? We're going to meet Chino. Chino? He's the leader of the Mexicans that are holding Brian. Chino likes me. He's always liked me. I'm not afraid of him. You are a fool. He's for revenge. He'll forget that and forgive me. I was stupid and selfish in those days. I've changed. He'll see that I've changed. You notice it, don't you? I'm a different person now. You're not going, Julia, and there's no way you can save Brian, so stop trying. You must take me with you. Why won't you? I don't hate you that much. But I do. You're not going, Julia. Mm. Mm. 
Looks like these Ladinos have been multiplying all the time the war was on. Mr. Chisholm thought you was optimistic about getting a thousand in a week. We can double that if you want to. I got a proposition for you. Instead of going east with these cattle, I want to head south into Mexico. Why? What for? I can't pay you for this trip, but I'll promise you double on the first try we make after we get back. What are we taking the cattle into Mexico for? There are 50 Texans down there in a pretty bad hole. They're liable to be dead unless we make this trip with the Ladinos. Ike, Willie, and Hank here have agreed to go along, and I'm putting it up to you boys. Did you really think you had to ask us? We'd follow you practically anywhere. Thanks. Courted Sally, away you rolling river. Seven more years I long to have her. Away I'm bound, away, away south of San Antonio. Well, my dear, I'm bound to leave. going with those cattle? Over into Mexico. Who are they for? Guerrillas of Juarez under Chino Figueroa. Are you sure? His sister's leading us to him. Well, it's all right then. Of course, if it was any kind of aid to the French. It would be in violation of the Monroe Doctrine. Didn't I meet you at Julie Allerby's house? That's right. It's on account of her we're down here. She led us on a wild goose chase, promised to show us Brian Culver's hideout. Where is she now? She got away across the Rio Grande, going to join a Mexican caravan going south. Why didn't you stop her? No, we don't cross the border. Even with that caravan, I figure she won't get very far. Pretty rough territory. Indians and guerrillas every step of the way. Let's go, Sergeant. She's going to be with trouble. If we ever catch up to her, I'll send her back. She's going to make trouble. I know that. Moving. I'm going to ride in and wiggle. Take him around the outskirts.
Call him over. Ask if he's seen her. Oiga. ¿No ha visto una señorita americana? ¿Americana? Sí, señorita. Está en la cantina. Gracias. Ay, de qué. But you cannot stay here, señorita. I think she knows that. Carl. That whole hundred miles from the Rio Grande, Pedro, myself, and the señorita are the only ones left of the caravan. You're pretty certain I'd show up, weren't you? I want to get to Brian. You wanted to get far enough into Mexico so I couldn't send you back. I must get to Brian. Why? Because he's all I have. And you're on your way to kill him. He's mine, and I want him. I want him alive and safe. You're bringing the ransom that will set him free. I also ask that you bring forgiveness. You really mean that? No, she does not. It is not for Brian. It is for you. I wouldn't take you to Brian under any circumstances. What do you intend to do? Leave me here? I have to drive the cattle through Monterey. It's a large enough place I can arrange lodging and protection until you find a group of Americans going back across the border. I've come all the way from the Rio Grande. There were men in our caravan killed. I was almost killed. Now you're telling me it was all for nothing. That you're going to take me to Monterey and leave me there. I told you not to come. I warned you. It's your idea and I'll live with it. How can you be so cruel? What have I ever done to you? Better get some riding clothes. I'll get you a horse and meet you here in an hour. Got shot in the breast and I'm dying today. Then swing your rope slowly and rattle your spurs lowly. Give a wild whoop as you carry me along. For in the grave throw me and roll the sod o'er me. For I'm a young cowboy and I know I've done wrong. Oh, beat the drum slowly and play the pipe lowly. It's an odd life one lives. I've learned such a lot from the girl. Such as what? The people everywhere are all the same. I suppose that's something you knew from the day you were born. But I didn't. From the time I was a child, I was told that I was somebody special. I was stupid enough to believe it. You were the one that was poor. But now you'll be a big man in Texas. Your own ranch and all. You'll be the someone special. You by any chance making this little speech because we're getting near to Monterey? Of course she is. How can you say that? How can either one of you say it? It's just that out here the world looks so immense that a human being begins to realize how small she is. How nothing she is. For three nights now, I, I've scarcely slept. 
I keep gazing up at those stars. They fascinate me. Sometimes... Sometimes when I gaze at them very hard, I... I think that I'm able to see the face of God. You are a changed girl. I hope so. I really hope so. of Monterey. A stronghold of the Mexican revolutionary, Juarez, is besieged by a force of regulars under the banner of Maximilian. Pretty bad shape. ¿Qué le pasa? ¿Qué ha sucedido? Los franceses atacaron Monterrey. The French attacked Monterrey. Todos están detenidos. Everybody's being detained. Hasta las mujeres y niños. Even the women and children. Las tropas francesas todavía están en el pueblo. The French troops are still in the city. We won't be going through Monterey. The French have attacked the city. Does that mean I'm going to be with you for the whole journey? I'll tell you again, Chino will hate you. We will never get to Chino. Why? To bypass the French. We must travel through the Apache country. The Lapin Apaches are very savage. How soon will we be in their territory? By tomorrow. What about water? It's a barren country. Perhaps no water in three days. Maybe four. We are taking a big chance. It's the only chance we have. Do you have any water? A little. I ran out early this afternoon. Four days in Apache territory. We haven't seen a sign of one of them. We're really very fortunate. Fortunate? Huh. We have not been following the main trail. Time's running out in those men Chino's holding. How much farther do we have to go? A day and a night. Well, a night without a fire. Do you think we'll reach water tomorrow? 
We'd have to lose half our cattle. The senorita is thirsty. Why don't you give her your canteen? I ran out this morning. Press this to your lips. Thank you, Carl. Sleep like this every night? Yes. Why? When you didn't wake up and find a rattlesnake staring you in the face. I was so afraid of those snakes the first three nights I scarcely slept. That is not what you told us. What was it I told you? You were counting the stars and realizing how nothing you were. Ah, that'll keep away. What is it? It's a hair rope. There isn't a snake in the world across that. That is really very thought. I'd do the same for any greenhorn. Why don't you talk, Harry? Why don't you mind your own business? Your scheme is working just fine. You forced your way on the strip. You asked him to bring me along for revenge. Because I know how Chino hates you. You and your cheap tricks and your cheap flirting. Who are you to call me cheap? But you boys like two pretty gals fighting over you. you're going. I'm going to join my brother. What about the rest of us? When I get to Chino, I will send you guides. Your temper's showing. That woman is bad luck. She's poisoned. I told you she was going to make trouble. Not half as much trouble as you. I hate her. When I see you close to her, I die. Do you love her? I'm so afraid of losing you. That is terrible. I have waited for you almost seven years. Praying for you, I wear out four pairs of rosary beads. Monina with a thorn in her foot. This time the thorn is in my heart. See if I can take it out. Gone now? Hmm. Almost. Thank you. 
If it's all gone now, please do me a favor. Don't be so close to her anymore. If a snake wants to sleep close to her, let it. It's not natural for one snake to look for another. Another one dropped. That's four we've lost in the past two hours. Well, if you're driving cattle, you got to figure on losing some. That's why we rounded up 700 head instead of five. Unless those cattle get water soon, we're going to lose all of them. Now, Miss Daniel says there's a water hole up ahead a few miles. Will you please ask Carl if we can stop for a rest? The only chance we have to save those men is to keep the cattle moving. Please tell him I'm sick. Tell him yourself. Senorita, feel you are not paying enough attention to her. Think I want to start another female free-for-all? She fell off her horse. my horse. to be such a burden to you. Wait a minute, Ike. Woo! Help me get her on the wagon. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry we ain't got a cushion, ma'am. It's mighty rough up here. the water for the guerrillas. We poison it for the French. You said this was Indian territory. They must have water. Yes, they do. But if we go near it, they see us. And if we don't, we all die of thirst. It is better than the Indians. Well, we have to have water. All right. Tú lo decides. It is southeast.
changing direction. There's water southeast of here. That's the best news I've heard. I wish I could get out of these things and put on a dress. Somebody told her that we are expecting company. She wants to look her best. Company? Indians. We haven't seen by now. I'll probably wait till dark and try to sneak in a small raiding party. We haven't had a fire for four nights. We'll have one tonight. But they'll see the fire. That's the idea. Do you think they'll come back? Yeah, tomorrow. They'll bring a war party with them. It'll be a dawn attack. This is just a skirmish. Do we have a chance? You want me to lie to you? I want to know about the Indians for a very good reason. If we're going to be killed, I want I'd you to... I'd rather not hear about it. Carl, I'm in love with you. When did you find that out? The night you slapped me. I need someone strong who will discipline me. What about Brian? I don't love him. He was there and I used him. Don't look at me like that. I admit I used him, as I have other people in the past. It's you I love. Poor Julia. Darling, can't we turn back? There's no turning back. What if we took the two fastest horses? We'll leave the cattle and the others here. That'd be a fine sellout, wouldn't it? Fifty Texans, my cattle crew, and Mustania. What does anything matter except us? It'll be a good life. There'll be no lies, no cheating. But we must at least have a chance. I've just seen violent death. I don't ever want to see it again. Carl, please, I'll do anything if you... I was right. She wants you to desert those that run away. That isn't true. Things are different now. The Indians will be back tomorrow and we'll all be massacred. She wants you to say that you love her. 
Don't worry, senorita. He loves you. He will not run away, but he loves you. You have always wanted her. Now she's yours. What are we going to do? Kill as many Indians as possible. Everything all right? Yeah, Ike, after the supply wagon to turn it over on its side. It's going to be our fort, the only protection we'll have. And hide the horses up in that draw. What are the odds? Depends on how many of them show up. This is liable to be the last fight any of us will ever have. They'll kill us and take our cattle. Tomorrow or the next day, there'll be some more Texas boys die, lined up against a wall. You got any more tricks in store for them? The only trick I know in a situation like this is the one the little senorita does with her rosary beads. Maybe they won't show up. Well, I thought they'd be here by now. Everybody understand his instructions? I reckon we do. I thought I told you to get a gun. I wouldn't know how to use it. Well, then stay down where you won't get hurt. Don't leave me alone.
bandits. No, no, hold the fire. Why, because they're Mexican? Never mind, hold your fire. Figueroa. Les traíamos ganado cuando nos atacaron los indios. Encontramos su ganado, señorita Figueroa. Parte de mi gente están abriéndose al cuartel. They are Chino's men. They have found the cattle. They will take us to Chino. Confederate troopers still alive? See? Si. They are over in the stockade. He brought cattle for you. The ranch. But I did not ask you for ransom. I asked the state of Texas. How did you end up as a bandit? <laughs> It is the times, Carl. A man has to feed his men, give them courage, guns, ammunition, horses, confidence and pride. And then he is no longer a bandit. Instead, he is a soldier sworn to liberate his country from a foreign invader. Really bring cattle? Yes, over 500 here. It is good you brought them. We need them. Traigan a la señorita aquí. Why did you bring her? Her own idea. Señorita Allerby. Chino. May I talk to you? Indeed you may. You have a long time to talk to me. There's something you must understand. I understand everything about you, senorita. Is Brian Culver one of the men you're holding? Yes. It gave me great pleasure to capture Senor Culver. He killed my father. Oh. I'm sorry, Carl. Well, I saved him for you. Have me taken to his cell. Pablo. Llevar al calabozo de Culver. Give me your knife. Carl, go! Señorita Allerby. Llévenla a mi cuarto. Germantown. I was under military orders. He was one of a group of others. They were firing on us. You killed him personally. Who told you that? Julia. You said once you were going to kill me. That's right. Are you ready? I'm ready. I waited a long time for this. <laughs>
I guess I should have expected that. settle our little business transaction. It is settled. I have ordered my men to bring the Confederate soldiers' horses up. Once they are here, your men will be released. I want to be sure they get to Texas. They will get back. General Shelby has reached Mexico City, and his offer to fight for the French was turned down by Emperor Maximilian. The troops are broken up, and there is no command left anymore. There is nothing for them to keep on fighting for. What about Julia? She will stay here as my prisoner. You can't mean that, Gino. I was in love with you. You made me fall in love with you. And the price of a kiss was a rope around my neck. You better send her back to Texas, Gino. No. It'll be better for you. No! You made me a promise once. Yes, for saving my life. I swore I would repay you for it. I want her. I want her released. I never break a promise, Carl. Then I'm free? Yes. You may go. is ready. They'll have a guide and guns. Maximilian has refused the services of General Shelby. Ransom has been paid to have you men released. Yay! You're all wanted back in Texas as marauders. If you break up and slip across the border in small groups, you'll be all right. Nobody will recognize you. If they do, just say you're some of Shelby's men coming back. Little old Texas is sure going to look good. What's a little about Texas? Thank you for getting us off. Who's going to be in charge of us on the way back? Brian Culver will be in charge till you reach the border. Oh. oh, we don't need him. I think we can make it back all right without Mr. Culver. That's right. All right, then just follow your guide. Culver will ride along with you. He's going to have a harder time explaining himself in Texas than you are. Mount up, boys. You're heading home. Yeah! I thought he was dead. I disarmed him in the fight. Couldn't kill him cold blood, huh? You're going back with Brian. But what about us? She's going back with me, such a terrible thing. Yes. Even your own men turned against you. And you told me you wanted her, Carl. Oh, I did. For this. Get her on a horse. Come on. No. You see, in a way, we're both having our revenge. Worst thing that could happen to either of them is for them to end up together. Adelante! 